Hey bosom buddies, welcome back to Tit Talk. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I think it's pretty obvious that I am not usually at a loss for words. I sure have a lot of opinions and I love nothing more than imparting knowledge and encouraging sovereignty and personal responsibility and all things related to pregnancy, birth, and the postpartum period. And so I thought it would be fun to start, you know, a podcast because there aren't enough of those out there. Uh, so we are going to introduce today Tit Talk, the podcast, the intention, of course, being that this will be something that I record regularly, uh, sometimes just myself, sometimes with wonderful guests and occasionally with the incredible group that you're about uh, to witness. I have been very lucky in the um, in my city, which is somewhat saturated with professionals uh, of all types related to mouths and babies and bodies, uh, I have managed to narrow down the field and connect with some incredible, incredible people um, who I am really excited to introduce you to. So today we are going to be discussing, well, just giving a little bit of background uh, about who we are, because this is going to be a group that you're going to be seeing regularly on Tit Talk, the podcast, and hopefully listening to regularly on Tit Talk, the podcast, uh, once we are up on all of the podcast hosting situations. I don't know what the official term is, like sites or engines, search engines, podcast engines. I don't know. Uh, the husband is the IT uh, mastermind. I am just here to look cute. Okay, roll the tape. Okay, I'm not really sure how we're introducing this because we don't have a name yet. So that's going to be super cute. Uh, and we have a podcast, or at least we're going to try to have a podcast where we can talk all things babies and oral function and nerdy body stuff. Uh, and maybe give families who are struggling with mm -hmm. babies with ties or feeding issues or speech issues or breathing issues a place to come and either commiserate and or laugh at us and or learn something. So I am Chelsea. I am an international board certified lactation consultant and a bunch of other stuff that kind of doesn't matter right now. Um, and I tend to be, I think, like the front line for people, professionals who are finding babies with feeding issues because I'm seeing them so soon. Um, and usually because things aren't going great. <laughs> the breastfeeding. I don't see the happy kids who are thriving and mom's nipples are still intact. Um, so I... <laughs> I'm just like the screener in a lot of ways. And I call on all of these wonderful professionals to come in and help me help the families um, so that feeding can be less of a stressful issue. Also on, uh, on two issues with sleep, which is a big one for babies and moms and dads mm. and everyone who, own, who owns a child and is tired. <laughs> who owns a child. <laughs> exact terminology, but I think you know what I mean. I've, I own four. I'm exhausted. Mm. I've been exhausted for a decade. This is one thing my mother warned me about. She's like, just plan to be tired. Yeah. Like, plan to be tired for 10 years. And there's tired, but then there's, like, exhausted because something was wrong. So... Mm -hmm. No one ever told me to plan for it. Mm. It just sucked mm -hmm. at first. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to get used to it or get comfortable I with I think life? with my first, I realized I liked her oh. around six months of age. Oh, that helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can stay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And it was rough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really rough. Yeah. And maybe if we can like get in and help families before they hit that wall. I think that's why I like doing what I do it's because awesome. of of that. Of being miserable. Tell and us and a little bit about that. yourself then. What is it that uh, you do? Uh, my name is Kristen Bachman and I am a pediatric feeding occupational therapist. Um, I work with babies from preemies to children up to 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So I work with the whole body besides the oral motor functioning. Um, I work with sensory processing. I work with the whole gamut of the foundational parts of us to the executive kind of um, fine motor, gross motor, sensory, oral motor. Very cool. Yeah. If you were to give like 
um, a schmo off the street who had no idea what any of that, because I love all those big words. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there was like an elevator pitch for a family, like why would this baby need an OT to help with? So depending on the age, but if we're talking about babies, I often get referrals because they have delays with not being able to eat, Mm -hmm. progress from um, nursing, bottle feeding to table foods. And so we're looking and I'm assessing if their oral motor area is weak. Um, Yeah, well, I look at the rate, if there's any retained reflexes Mm -hmm. um, and then we work on integrating those. But for the oral motor, yeah, I mean, it depends. It it may be even earlier where it's a latch or um, Mm -hmm. uh, like with a bottle, something like that. They're not able to manage the flow rate or whatever Mm -hmm. it may be. Um, so I work with children that have disabilities, that have neurological disabilities, but also typical that just need some help with the oral motor. So working on like the tongue, the jaw, everything about that. But all of this is all of like, this is more important. So the full body, I'm so focused on the full body. So often PT and OT overlap when we're, when we're working with babies um, because we're both very concerned with that full body. So do they have postural stability? Do they have strength in their core? Do they have head, neck support? Um, is there any torticollis? Often I see torticollis in mm-hmm. my feeding babies, often, because you're on this side, right? And then also we're weaker on one side, so then I'm looking and seeing that the tongue doesn't transfer over, yeah. um, our whole body doesn't transfer over. Right. So you often see weakness and all of that. And how that can have implications for things like, can they crawl, can they roll? Absolutely. Can they talk? Absolutely. Can they walk without tripping over themselves? Right. Can they bring food to their mouth? Can so you're looking sleep? at all those basic yeah. foundational things that we take for granted when babies are born, yeah. that they just are supposed to go through this sure. developmental stage, but often, um, that doesn't happen, even yeah. with typical babies. Yeah. So focus on the whole thing. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, good it's all connected, right? It is all connected. Biotensibility. Is that the word? Do you guys mm-hmm. know that word? Mm-hmm. So exciting. <laughs> Shin bones connected to all the other bones. Mm-hmm. And yeah. How a kink in one spot can yeah. affect Absolutely. everything else. Yeah. Like the tongue being connected to the toes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. all of the things. So often I'm always talking to PT saying, please, please, refer out to me yeah. because if they have torticollis I am telling you there's going to be other things going mm, on for sure. and feeding is going to be a huge for sure. thing right. for sure mm. I think bio tensegrity tensegrity yes and the tongue and the toes being connected mm. has to do with the fascia sure. right and so um the lingual frenum being that little fascial mm-hmm. restriction there and if the tongue can't raise mm-hmm. and the tongue is such an important muscle move it all the For time sure. and then yeah it can connect to the big toe that deep front line of fascia so absolutely. it is absolutely all connected it's so cool yeah. introduce yourself i am angie Binat. i was a dental hygienist for 25 years so i spent a lot of time in people's mouths um i'm a myofunctional <laughs> therapist and um, I became a myofunctional therapist in 2013, and that was really life-changing mm-hmm. for me. Um, and yeah, so working on adults and children who have a hard time breathing and sleeping, um, which affects everything else in our lives. It affects yes. our moods. It affects mm-hmm. our focus. I realized maybe if I can get in earlier and start working on function totally. from day one, can we help these children grow in a better, healthier way with forward jaws, bigger airways, um, sleep better, and breathe better? Mm-hmm. So that's... avoid some of the harder. I mean, it is. I don't know if this is something you guys find, but it's a lot harder to change patterns. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was sin for yes. twenty years. Yes. So. Oh, there was something yeah. I was reading the other day that it says we rarely unlearn. A habit oh, and so gosh. that's why I'm like okay let's start from the beginning and yeah. get proper function and then none of us have to unlearn those bad habits yeah. um, and hopefully there'll be less sleep apnea in the world because yeah. of it so can you explain a little bit more about how 
like what OMT looks like, what that therapy looks so like. So myofunctional therapy is really neuromuscular re-education, and we do that through a series of exercises um, with the oral facial muscles. Um, typically, when we work on children and adults, myofunctional therapy, we have to have the patient compliant and, you know, working along with us because that's a difficult thing is mm -hmm. the compliance and all yeah. of it to really change that habit. Um, so, yeah. And like I say, to relearn a new functional healthy habit, it can take like three months mm -hmm. and sometimes up to a year. It's actually very comforting to know that it's not longer than that. I sort of would have thought it would have been, you know, I think a much in some process. Instances though, it does stay in like our cells because sure. like like my husband for instance had a list growing up, and mm. when he goes back to that muscle memory, oh, it yeah. feels good. Yeah, like he's it's like, oh, you know, yeah. it feels so good to do that. Yeah. Um, so I think it on some level it always sticks with us. Sort of like mm. all these things are stored in our bodies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you do work with little little ones. Yes, newbies. Yes. Yeah. So I started working mm. with babies, like I say, mm. to you know, address a tongue tie early on. If, if the tongue is restricted, then, and we talked about how that's a process, not a procedure. Mm -hmm. um, takes a lot of supporting. We'll appearance. get into that in depth <laughs> at <laughs> some point. Um, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but absolutely. Um, yeah, awesome. I do work with little ones now. That's exciting. Yeah. It's good to start early. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm. Dr. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tim here. I'm a chiropractor. I didn't know how much I loved working with kids until I got an opportunity to do so right out of school. I thought it was athletes that I wanted to focus more of my attention on, but it turns out it's little kids and I love working with them. Um, similar to what you brought up, like we don't grow out of things, we grow into them. Into them. So the quicker we can find that and create new, uh, just neural pathways and uh, strengthen or releasing fascia, um, it can work wonders. And I find it really helpful, especially with kids who had a long, challenging labor, just opening up the upper cervical spine. I think that can work wonders with any sort of latch, tension, um, yeah, and just like overall comfort in the body. Um, and just working with the mom, their nervous system mm -hmm. can yeah. be really jacked up. Totally. Mm. As is everybody that needs to behave, say, I right? I think in general, we're all mm. in sympathetic overdrive. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. It really feels that way. We all kind of get trapped mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. It's that so important, though. It's so important to have co regulation mm -hmm. more than anything, right? And so it doesn't what, have to be that complicated either. Yeah, like no. Skin to skin, yeah. breastfeeding, it goes such yeah. a long way. Have and someone bring you some damn food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't go to the pediatrician on day three. Like, who? Mm. Why? <laughs> why do pediatricians hate babies? I don't know. Am I allowed to ask that question yet? <laughs> of course, it's a safe space. Knock yeah. it off. <laughs> Either you come to them or you wait two weeks. Mm. That's my feel. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know if there's a problem. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> can't be the only one. Um, I, I love all of that. And I think it's a really interesting place to be where, where I feel very lucky to have found a team. Yeah. Um, so if you are a parent who is struggling with feeding, um, find yourself a team and reaching out, yeah. you can reach out to, to us here. Um, and we can see if we can point you in the right direction, but this is a multidisciplinary process um you know back in the day when birth wasn't so heavily managed and labors mm. maybe weren't generally four days long uh i don't think that there may have been the same amount of tension and discomfort and stuff mm. um, but we are in the world we're in and so having maybe instead of buying a thousand dollar straight jacket napper uh, you could save that money and yeah. like have a team ready to go. So yeah. as one of the things that I always recommend, um, anyone who's taken any of my classes knows, prenatally, like get your team ready. Like yeah. be prepared mm -hmm. with the chiropractor, be prepared with the lactation consultant, add the OT, yeah. the OMT, the people who can come in and support you and your family. 
that's kind of where the money should be going. It mm-hmm. is. Absolutely. Like the opposite of what we're yes. sold, which is more bucket seats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. because we all care about you and the baby, the family, mm-hmm. the well-being. Yeah. And from a very personal level, I know you were mentioning that you struggled a lot. Oh, like absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Emma, I love her. She's now 15. <laughs> so She probably sleeps all the time now. She what? She probably sleeps all the she time does. now. She drives yes. me nuts. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it was rough. It was, I, I mean, I would pace back and forth like 70 um, lunges. And then I would put her down and then she'd wake up and I'm like, Fuck. Yeah. Mm. Oh totally. my God. Totally. How can this be? No one told me. Yeah. Either she's going to go back up inside of me. Or I'm selling her. Or I'm like her. giving her away, not <laughs> yeah. even selling her. Yeah. Like just Drop her go. Off the fire station. Right? That's what's happening. First Which is funny. My ex husband's a firefighter. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be really upset. <laughs> Where did you go? What's my kid, what's my kid doing here? <laughs> You're giving it up. Just don't go to that station. Yeah. But no, it was it was rough. Yeah. So yeah, I think so for me, I connect so well to mm-hmm. parents, even ones that aren't struggling as bad as what I did. But yeah. it's just nice. I mean, I I literally had half of my nipple completely floating oh, in my little nipple shield with yeah. blood everywhere, yeah. looking at this little child, Therapy. and yeah, and mm-hmm. thinking this isn't fun. This mm-hmm. isn't natural. No. And I'm an OT. Been an OT for 16 years. Done feeding yeah. this whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah worked in the NICU yes. like how did we get that? but it's your own baby so it's a lot it's different, different. Mm-hmm. and it was a lot of stress so if I would have had people come in and understand me yeah. my lack of sleep yeah. my depression my mm-hmm. sadness over it mm-hmm. my non-connection with her yes. and mm-hmm. really look at how the can holistic. I yes how mm-hmm. can I help with these right. two to connect mm-hmm. yeah. It would have been so much more peaceful than right. actually sitting at six months going, oh, I do yeah. like you. <laughs> but also, Just a little, not a lot. <laughs> Just enough that I'll keep you. Yeah. yeah. But also there's that piece where I think in our society, um, the responsibility for that baby who can't sleep is handed to the baby. Right. Mm. Where we're saying, well, you right. just need to teach them. Yes. Mm-hmm. You just need to sleep train them. Oh, yeah. Do these three things for three nights. Absolutely. Like your baby will sleep like a dream. Oh, yeah. And we're handing the responsibility for a very high functioning skill, not skill, mm. high functioning biological function and that's onto not... a an immature brain yeah. and underdeveloped nervous system. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't really make any sense. Oh, yeah. Problem. I remember putting my bra in the crib oh. to try mm. to have her sleep. And that like obviously doesn't work. <laughs> She's right? like, bitch, I know what you're doing. <laughs> right? <laughs> If I just would have realized, yeah. sleep with me, yeah. you know, Definitely. it's okay. But everyone tells you don't, you know, right. mm. but it, you got to focus on what is best for you. And sometimes you don't know. So having people that are really, truly loving and want the best for you. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And know that it's more than just what, it, it's not a reflection of your parenting. Absolutely. Mm. It's not. If your baby doesn't sleep. It is not a reflection of your no, parenting. No, it's not. If your baby is struggling with feeding. Absolutely. It is a reflection of the crap support we have yes. in our society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and not just from like a professional standpoint, but like the, like we just don't have the village. So yeah. I don't have the aunts and the sisters and the moms mm-hmm. and the right. everybody right. Right. there to be like, let me just take the kids so you don't Yeah. Them. Oh, like, I didn't have that. that. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. None That's, of us do. And so yeah. I think that that puts us all in a really yeah. precarious situation. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, beautiful thing to be able to come in and like support them now like mm. knowing what that's yeah. like no yeah. time's like what yeah <laughs> not yet I got to no, get him a baby in due time this is great birth control with this baby he's never gonna do it oh, oh no he no. killed it I am looking forward to it I'm just <laughs> enjoying, my, enjoying my sleep and free time yeah. while I have it for what it's worth, and I don't know if this was your experience uh, once you had the baby for maybe the six months or like had another one I sleep like the dead now. Like mm-hmm. I've had no issues after I figured out what was what and what I could just blatantly ignore with my first. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I sleep great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've slept really great since the day she was born. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, but it is a learning process. For mm-hmm. sure. And she's yeah. my fourth, so yeah. to be fair, right? Yeah. Right. And every baby is yeah. different too. Yeah. And I think every baby what is you different. went through, and I went through something very similar, and I think it gives you a different perspective, and you become almost a better mm. clinician yes because mm. of that like yeah. you're like yeah. that gets you i was there and mm. i know how yeah. hard this is yeah. so yeah. yeah no 
it's cool to be able to come together and give them some support. Yeah. And drive mm. Tim along for the ride. Yeah. yeah. I'm here for it. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we want to just wrap up and that can just be how we get started. That felt really inspiring. Go back, go, back, um, go back to life and parenting and yeah. what have you. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Yes, so thank you. Thank you. We're doing this again. Yes. Let them know. We're going yes. <laughs> we are. For Interrogation sure. room and never die. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do an awkward high five like we did the last time then? Four at once. So they asked like kind of three awkward high fives. Like, what do you mean? Like, like towards yeah. the camera? Or at each other randomly. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think our last high five was... Probably. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we should cro- do crossovers. Should we? Should we do this? Do okay. Uh, I like this. this is Crossing midline. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. God, we're such nerds. I love it. Okay, thanks. We'll be back. Bye. Bye. Bye.